On Sunday, May 30th, the local environmental nonprofit, Malama Opuna, held a garden tour open house from noon to three at its educational center in Pahoa Village. The event was attended by over 40 members of the public, 15 of whom participated in Norris's 90-minute garden tour. A total of 249 plant propagation cuttings and pots of 18 species were distributed for free, including 48 donated by the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship of Puna. Impetus for this program comes from a Hawaii Island United Way grant for rapid responses to the COVID-19 crisis. Our program is just getting started, so tune in over the course of the next 10 months for more garden tours, and more free keiki at malamaopuna.org. All right, I'm not going to try to give like a full permaculture class, but I'll touch on some of the ways that it has informed the design here. Permaculture, the simplest definition is that a design system or set of design principles that you can apply anywhere you are, whether Ohio or the tropics, because it's not about the specifics, not about the specific plants or techniques. It's about the, the principles and the strategies of how you analyze a site, think about what you're trying to accomplish, and then think about how to accomplish it. Let me start with a brief history of this site. Um, but in the past, it was a citrus orchard, so there are still several, maybe eight remnant citrus plants in the back, and we'll see those. So that's one of the considerations when you're getting on a new site is what's already there that you can use because it's better not to make interventions and changes if you don't have to, if something is already working. Someone at some point cultivated a lot of ornamentals and they seem to have been carefully tended and they put in like little rock, rock beds around them. I don't know when that was and what overlap it had with the citrus orchard. At some point people stopped caring for those and the whole lot just kind of became overgrown between the ornamentals that had been planted and other volunteers that came in. And then Malama Opuna acquired the property in 2017. And Anne, I know, planted ulu very early on, like a breadfruit tree. And did you plant any of the other stuff early on, or was it just the ulu? The abiru and the mame americana were not about the same time as the ulu, okay. I think. Okay, so those are the, the ulu is definitely the biggest tree of the new stuff we planted on site because Anne planted that earliest and so we'll see that in the far back. Um, and then the last couple of years have been when I, with the help of some others, have really cleared out all of the ornamentals and unwanted stuff to just open up space and start planting things we do want. And then that's all been the backyard. The front yard has really just been converted starting at the beginning of this year. So about six months now that's been in progress. This back has been in various stages for about four years. Okay. This is longevity spinach, and it, uh, it is known for its medicinal properties. It lowers cholesterol and regulates blood pressure. Oh, okay. And you can eat it raw. Cool. Yeah, or cook it. Cook it. And the pests stay away from it. I have yet to find a slug munching on this. And then sisu spinach, which is a low densely like it's a dense kind of bushy plant that keeps weeds out so I like to plant this around my pineapples oh, okay. and that keeps the grass from growing into my pineapples and it helps the pineapples sit up because it kind of makes a cushion underneath so and then of course this is a uh, this is a perennial basil the bush that I uh, harvested this from is about four years old now oh, wow. still pumping and I let it flower and it, the bees love it they love cool. the flower, so if nothing else, grow up for bee food. <laughs> All right. If not for pesto. Right. right. Oh, we have air potato. I don't know if you're familiar with air potato. That's a vine that produces potatoes on the vine. Oh, wow. really? And they drop off, and you just use it like potato. Wow. Yeah. Okay.